everybody. Hi, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. That's my blog. Wow, we are one week away from Christmas 2020. Crazy. My uh, video editing software is doing an upgrade, so I am, or update, upgrade, update, something like that. So I decided to take a few minutes while it's doing its thing and chat with you guys. Want to let you know, I had talked in my last video about getting new chairs, and I just, I did just that. I took my video camera with me, and I went to the container store and did some shopping. I got some new thread storage containers. I actually went to get a storage solution for all of my stabilizers. I have a whole bunch. Well, somebody on our Facebook group put a picture of one that they made, and it's fabulous and so I've got to get that pattern and get that done and then I must have I don't know probably 10 no 20 rolls of stabilizer here there and everywhere and I really need a I need a solid solution for that so I'm gonna go and get that and if you're not a member of our Facebook group please join us we're just quilters and machine embroiderers and show what we do and support one another and answer questions and all that. So we're not, we don't stick to any one thing. We're not a specific group that sticks to any one thing and everybody's welcome. Okay, I gave that plug. Oh, and another thing to let you guys know, the Facebook group is actually tied to my personal Facebook account. And I know a lot of you have sent me the uh, messenger messages. I'm not ignoring you. I can't separate the Power Tools with Thread Facebook group from my personal account. I've tried, and Facebook doesn't allow me to do that. But when I started it, I didn't start it like a business account. And so it's permanently tied to my personal account. And if I answer you back on your message through Facebook Messenger, you can then see when I'm online and you can call me using Messenger video calls. And y'all, it's not that I don't love you. I do, I love each and every one of you. But you know, I've gotta have a boundary. There's gotta be a boundary of, uh, you know, <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta set that up. So I don't want you to think I'm ignoring you. I am not. But if you would like to message me, you can always email me at my uh, my email is powertoolswiththread at outlook.com. Hubby is out right now. He went to volunteer today with Reads Across America. And for those of you who are unaware, if you're outside the US, Reads Across America is a charity that was started several years ago to put wreaths, Christmas wreaths with little red bows on all of the on all of the tombstones at our national cemeteries. He went to Fort Sam Houston National Cemetery this morning with his buddy Frank and they took a trailer over there and the, the their mission when it started was to unload the wreaths from the semis that come in from the distributor to the smaller trailers and you know those national cemeteries are ginormous and then to transport the wreaths because there are volunteer groups that walk the grave sites and put one in each headstone. Well, their job was to transport the wreaths from the semi-trailers in their trailers to wherever in the cemetery that their group was going to be putting out wreaths. Well, he got to the cemetery this morning at 9, and it's already 3.30 in the afternoon, so I suspect that he went ahead and started putting reeds out on the graves with the rest of the, the crew because he should have been back by now if he was just doing the, the initial wreath transport. So that's really nice. My friend Lori always makes sure that my dad, who is buried at Fort Sam Houston, she, he gets a wreath every year. They're for like $15 and it's just really a nice thing. And it's just absolutely a beautiful scene with all the wreaths on the stones and all that. So I'll be there one day myself. Hopefully my boy will put a wreath on my grave. <laughs> uh, 
Okay. I had told y'all before. Oh, let me get back to my chairs. Where did I go? Okay, so I went to the container store. I did get some thread storage that I really liked. Okay, I just came off of I-35 North. Continue straight for five minutes to exit 28. And to market 26, 96, San Pedro Avenue, Blanco Road. That's Waze telling me where to turn. I don't get into town a whole lot and I'm always worried that I'm gonna miss my exit. Okay, we're just going past the airport. So, this is on the north side. Here's our airport. Got a big new parking thing over there. Look at that, man. Um, I think I have my exit coming up here. I'm gonna... If you haven't been in San Antonio in a while, I know a lot of you have been here before, but it has really changed. In one mile, exit right to exit 28, park to market 2696, San Pedro Avenue, Blanco Road. And keep right. Such a nice lady on the ways out. So, let's see. I think McCullough is an exit only. It is. So, I'm going to stay right where I'm at. I used to work in this building I'm driving by. Right there, that big, that big red one right there with the Renaissance Plaza. I used to work in that building. Man, I hated coming to work every day. Hated it. So there's two malls up here on my left. There's uh, North Star Mall and Central Park Mall. They're all but dead, I think. So now I need to move over. And I got all kind of traffic here. Exit right to exit 28, farm to market 2696, San Pedro Avenue, Blanco Road. I hear you. Then keep right to farm to market 2696, Blanco Road. Isn't that nice? She calls it Blanco. <laughs> I grew up Blanco, but it, I guess it technically is Blanco. If you're speaking it correctly in Spanish. I love having all the safety features in this car. Keep right to farm to market 2696 Blanco Road. Oh, and there's right. There's an office depot in here too. That's good. Exit right. Then turn left. I'm going to turn uh, right here because I think I can get to the container store from this little driveway right here. Yep, there's the sign for it right there. But since there's an Office Depot in Turn here left. too, I want to check that out because they ha also have chairs in Office Depot. So, haha, -ha, there it is. The container store. Okay, I'm fixing to check out that bungee chair everybody raves about. You've arrived at your destination. Yes, lady, thank you. Okay, filming in the store, but I think I, I think I did pretty well. The chair was a bust. The uh, bungee chair did not work for me. It was a little wobbly. But what I did find, these are large media boxes with a split lid. And, and it's got three dividers in it. It opens from this side. How about that? I just see thread in there. The large embroidery thread that I have. And then you can open it from this side as well. Look at that. So I got five of those. Y'all, they're only $20 a piece. $19.99 for those. That's a real deal. And then I also purchased this. This is called a desktop sorter slim. Can you see that there? That's what that is. Now, the reason I got this was for all of my patterns that I have that are in the bags, the eight and a half by 11 patterns. I have a lot of them that are kind of on a shelf and they're kind of sliding. They don't have anything to hold them up. So I got those. And I like, um, I probably have enough to fill this whole thing. I probably should have got two, but anyway. And then I splurged on the big art, art bin satchel and 
this one was I think they're forty dollars and the reason I like it is because it has these uh, drawer these pieces that come off on the side this just to me screamed um, bobbin matching bobbins to uh, my my quilting threads there I can put bobbins in this and then you there's another you can open this up on top and then inside look at that how big that is and this thing all by itself was forty dollars but I think this is money well spent art bin makes a fabulous product it's got latches and it has a handle so I really like that that was the container store I'm still in search of a chair I'm off to Office Depot next my seats down to get more in here so I bought another one of those and the drafting chair to sit at Spanky and that nice young man went back inside to go get them so excited the customer service here was excellent this is office depot at uh, 410 this is on the north side at 410 uh, San Pedro I think awesome what's your name uh, my name is Keith Keith? That's my husband's name. Good name. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Awesome. How nice was this? I picked up this one. This is called a drafting chair. And it's a little taller than a regular chair that would sit at a sewing machine. It's got a ring you can put your feet on and it rolls around. Really nice. I got that one. And then I got three, they're called task chairs. And I really like them. And y'all, they were only $60 a piece. I can't believe it. They're comfortable. They've got lumbar support. And they're cushy enough. And, you know, for my purposes, I think they're going to be fine. Let me show you the chairs. Okay, so here's the task chair. And then I got these task chairs. That was the drafting chair. Okay, and here's the task chair. And I really like these. I wanted them mostly because, as you can see, my cords from my long arm run across the floor. And I only had one chair. And any time I had to move it, I had to uh, navigate these cords, which I hated. But I love it because, it does, it, for one, it has a nice firm seat, which I need for my back. I get plenty of support on my lower back. And the, the size of them, look, it just snugs right up 
underneath this desk out of the way, low profile, no arms, it's perfect. So I got one for each workstation. And so far so good, I'm very happy with them. And for my thread storage, I actually found these, they're called large media storage box. And I like it, hold on. I like these because they hold a ton of these big spools. And you guys know I have a ton of these big spools that were given to me. I just love these because they have two different ways to open. And so they're really easy to get to whichever color you need. They're clear so it's easy to see. And it has two dividers inside. So they are easy to uh, keep everything separated by color got my greens and my pinks and purples and here's my grays and then I have some oranges and reds here blues and I'll have white and black you see I have space I need more <laughs> thread but I picked up five of those so there's another one there's another two of them under there so that's really nice and then this one over here has all of my essential pro cones in it so as far as I'm concerned, I have found a suitable storage solution for my cones. Now I have all of my other thread over here in different smaller, they're not as tall, the bins are not as tall, and that is so that those are separated by garment threads and quilting threads and embroidery threads and that kind of thing. Still not ideal. I know there's a better solution out there short of having a wall of nothing but pegs. I, I'm not real sure uh, and that's not really practical for my needs. So right now I like this because I can get to a bunch of different ones very easily and they're, it's, it's, if I need, I am going to need to move these because they're going to have to move into the other room. I just need to make sure that I have shelving in the new room that can hold those big boxes. I don't think that'll be a problem. I finished another quilt that was on my quilt rack. Let me show you. Remember the Warmest Wishes quilt? This was done last February, I think. Was it February? No, I don't remember when we did it. So this was one of the Simply Applique projects, Warmest Wishes. I really like it. It's got little flamingos and palm trees on it. How cute. Do you love this? Look at that. This was good. I put the little corner pockets on the back so I can hang it. So that'll be really cute when I get that up. I'm very pleased with this. So I finished Hallelujah. This one. Finished this one. These are both Urban Elements patterns. Finished both of these. And um, just as happy as can be to get that taken care of and done. I've got a couple, you know, I've got several more to do, but it's just nice. These have been hanging around and I was like, oh, I don't know what I want to do with that. And it's just, I just didn't know. And I can't wait to show you guys how I did this, but that's going to have to wait until the new year. Again, it's part of that super, super secret project I'm working on. Also, I got the Sew by Row. I'm doing the sew by row quilt, the one that looks just like this. This is a block of the month and I will link to it below. And this month row is the pin cushions. I have those all cut and I've got them here on my project board with alpha bitties and I'm very happy to have that done. I actually made extra long binding for warmest wishes. So I would have enough left over to be able to go around this project board. This just has a piece of batting on it. And I had put this on here, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, but I didn't really have enough uh, binding to put over it. And there is a video, this is Lori Holt's idea, and I just follow her idea and hot glue this on and it's like a piece of binding. So that's really handy. Hey, months ago, I had talked about this quilt this is not basket case. I can't remember the name of it. It's a Villa Rosa Designs. And I had put a couple of blocks in here wrong. Or they looked wrong, but uh, when you look at how they're supposed to go, you know, one this way, one that way, one this way, they're right. But maybe it's the contrast in the fabric colors that made it look wrong. I took one block out 
and it, you know, left like a hole. <laughs> and then I put it back and I said, you know what? <laughs> I'm not going to take this thing apart. I'm just not because I think what it is, is like, so look at this gray one here. And see this gray one goes where it has the big zigzag down this way with the short gray like that right here, that little gray. So you, you've got from the right corner down to the left. Well, if you look farther down, the next gray block is, it looks like it's upside down, but it's not. And I, it's just bad, it's just bad block placement. They're not wrong, but it just looks funny. This is the one Joy said, Becky, something's wrong with that quilt. <laughs> I said, I know. And I even took it down to before it's a quilt in Port Lavaca and me and my quilty buddy Lisa and Jean, the owner of the store, and her friend Ann, we all sat there and looked at it, looked at it, and figured out what needed to change. Well, I didn't put a note on it and I didn't figure it out. So I just said, you know what? That was really a lot of work to remove that one block, turn it, and put it back. And I didn't see a noticeable difference. So I'm just going to quilt it. I'm just going to quilt it and. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it as is. I'm not that. I'm I'm not gonna be that way. I'm I'm not that quilter. <laughs> you guys, I'm having so much fun with this 10 needle, and two of you have told me that you have purchased one. And one of you got them from uh got it from all brands in San Antonio, Jan. So very happy about that. We're gonna be doing lots of projects on that coming up in the new year too. I'm really excited about doing things with that. Uh, my son got the pot holders and he said, those are fabulous. He sent me a picture of his old ones. <laughs> and uh, he said, the new ones are great. So that's good. I told him, I said, you may not like the fabric, but oh well, that's what, that's what Grammy sent. I don't know if they're going to hold off on giving the, um, the snowballs to the kids on Christmas morning or if they're having a snowball fight right now. So, Also, I want to thank Sherry very much. Sherry, the Christmas gift you sent me is just gorgeous. You guys, look at this. I don't know where the pattern's from. And she used in the gold their metallic threads. It, just beautiful. So, so pretty. Isn't that lovely? I really, really like this. Thank you so much. And a beautiful Christmas card to go with it. You really shouldn't have. You didn't have to. Uh, Sherry lost her husband this year and um, we shared some special uh, emails back and forth and whatnot. I truly believe that stitching mends the soul. I really do. When I lost my dad in 14, uh, I spent a lot of time behind the sewing machine, especially in that period of time where it's immediately after. And I was off work for two weeks, you know, so I had 10 work days plus a weekend in the middle where, you know, when there's a death in the family, there's arrangements that have to be made and paperwork that has to be done and so much that goes on. And you're always in kind of a waiting game until everything gets done, until the funeral is over and all of that. And I tell you, if I did not have my sewing machine to, I'm glad I had UFOs at that time. I sewed and I sewed and I sewed. And it really, you know, it occupies your mind. It occupies your hands. And uh, it, it, it got me through something very, very tough. And so... Sherry uh, went through that as well this year, so God bless you, sweetie. And uh, Katie, I got your e-card. <laughs> You're a nut. <laughs> that made me laugh. Those little guys are so cute. Thank you so much. You guys are so sweet. I just love my viewers. You guys are the best people in the entire world. <laughs> all right, you guys. I think that's all I had to talk to you. Is that all I had to talk to you about? I think so been working in this studio and having a ball with it and uh, doing a lot of cool fun things. All right, that's it. We will talk to you soon. Go sew something. Bye.